Welcome to Essentials Explained. This is our second video covering continuous bucketing of numeric variables. In this video, we'll be discussing how to utilize the VLOOKUP formula and best practices for completing this analysis. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's jump right in. Let's go back here because I actually think there's some things we could do to, to clean this up. And I'll talk about this more in a, a different video, but, but let's just go through this text formula. So what this does is it takes a value and formats a specific number into a specific text format. So if I take my value and then format text will be, you know, let's say I just wanted to add commas. I could add hashtag or pound sign, pound sign, close my parentheses, so you see how it formatted that number to, to make it a little bit cleaner, which I think is nice and, and maybe worth the time to do. Another thing you can do, which, which is, I think is probably pretty clever, is leave a comma behind a value variable, and then maybe you wanna add a, a K. And so what this will do is this will denote 7,000, and this number actually stays as 7,000, but this comma will divide your number by 1,000. So if I go through and let's say I wanted to update this for all of my different variables, I could use pound sign, comma, K, close it, uh, close the parentheses for my text lookup. And then again, I could do this here. I could go variable K, close that, close the parentheses, drag that down because these are fine. And then all I need to do is update this, right? Text, I could do the same thing. Okay, close it. Cool. So this is a different way to look at it, right? I think this maybe looks a little bit cleaner. You could do this differently, right? Let's let's say you wanted to add a decimal point. You could do that. You could you know add whatever you want. And, and again, I will talk about these number formats a little bit later. But there's a number of ways you can clean this up in a highly automated and highly helpful way that will make your life much much easier. So now that we have this classification column, what we can do is we can actually just map it back into our working data. So I'm gonna add a different area and I'm just gonna call this um, store, or I should just call this owner lookup because this is what this really is. And let's see what color we have left. Maybe we use orange. I don't think I've used that yet. Um, I'll copy this down. I'll actually copy this format in two. And then what I can use is an index match. My index will be my classification. So what I want, I'll lock that in place. I will use my match to identify my row number. My lookup and my working data will be my owner. My lookup array will be the owners in my lookup table. I'll lock that in place, exact match. And now I'll actually just update that coloring and I can fill that down. Right, I got a bunch of these NAs because corporate won't match. If you want to clean that up, you can come up here and say if NA, and then just maybe put a quotation mark, quotation mark to not show anything. So we just went through the process of building in this owner lookup. Why did we do this? We did this so we could evaluate the margin implications of different franchisee sizes. So we wanted to understand whether there were economies of scale benefiting the smaller franchisees that sold more product than the smallest franchisees. Let's take a look. Easiest way to do this with a pivot table. Alt NVT, I'll put in a pivot table on a new sheet. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna drag my category. So my owner lookup is gonna go into my rows. My revenue will go into my values. And then I'll just drag in my margin dollars into my values as well. I have these blanks here. These are for all the ownership categories that don't have an owner lookup, right? If I drag this into the rows, pretty easy to see this is corporate and large franchisees. I'm just gonna remove them because I don't care about them. I just wanna look at small franchisees. This is out of order. Pretty easy to just reorder these. Doesn't take a super long time. What I wanna see here is we have the sum of revenue and the sum of margin. What we want to see is the margin for each of these groups. Again, you could simply do this with margin divided by revenue gives you your answer and that's fine. I'm going to do it with a calculated field because I think it's easier and lets me be a little bit more flexible in my data. 
So if I add in a column called, a calculated field called margin, and this is going to be margin dollars divided by revenue. I will add this, I will hit okay. And you can see I have the sum of margin here, right? Quick refresher, if you wanna make this a percent, you can go in here, number format, percentage, that works. That is a pretty easy way to do that. And you can see, what's our answer? Doesn't really seem to be true. It actually seems like some of the smaller ones have, have slightly better margin, but they're all super, super consistent. Cool thing about calculated field is I can actually remove these. So let's say I wanted to remove revenue. Let's say I didn't want to look at dollars and I just wanted this little table here. I have this super, super simple. Don't even need the original values. If I wanted to bring these back, um, I could also drag in the owner, which I think is probably helpful just to be able to see, you know, who's within specific categories and what is their specific margin. So in case you wanted to have, you know, let's say a, like a notes column here, and this was like where you're gonna take your notes on different franchisee interviews. You could do this and you could have, you know, all the information you need at your fingertips, right? So relative size, relative scale, margin, percent, pretty good check. And again, if, if you wanted to make sure this is pulling in correctly, as always, always helpful to double check your data, you could go here, you could go to revenue, you could divide by two plus eight divided by 12. You could fill that down and just double check that none of these are pulling in incorrectly, right? These are all under seven. These are all seven to nine. These are all nine to 12. And so we've done that. I think that's pretty good. One super cool thing you can do here is we made these buckets. These looked pretty good to me, but you can toggle these, right? So I could go in here and I could change this to maybe 10,000. Maybe I actually want this one to be, you know, 15,000. I think this should be 6,500. And all these criteria and thresholds will update accordingly. So I can go back as long as this is updated. So make sure your formulas aren't automatic. You can go back to your pivot table, hit refresh. It'll probably mess up your... Um, ordering, which I find is pretty annoying. But again, I don't think it's super long to update every time. I think it's actually pretty fast. And so you see, we've just updated these different buckets. I don't think we had anything in the 10 to $15,000 bucket, which is why this is not showing. But you can double check that here. Um, it's actually just going to retain your, your old values because it, it gets a little confused. But we've updated this, right? So now we have this under six and a half thousand bucket. We have this six and a half to a thousand, which you can see works. And then this 15 to seven and then the 17,000. So super, super flexible and always why you want to build it with a threshold as a reference and a criteria. So it's really, really fast in case you're in a meeting and someone says, Hey, you know, this bucketing doesn't look quite right. Maybe if we set that you know, second threshold to 11,000 and you can go back in and, you know, refresh your pivot table, change these names and you've had the analysis done in a matter of seconds as opposed to taking you you know half an hour or an hour if you're interested in understanding how to check your analysis a critical skill for anyone working with excel please check out the next video in our series otherwise thank you for joining us at essentials explained and comment any questions or feedback you have below